Alrighty, I will share my screen. Hopefully everyone can see now. All right, so thank you, uh, Reshma and Alex, for the introductions. Just very quickly, I'm Josh Lieben. I'm the CTO of Topology Health. And what I'm going to show you today is how we took MedPlum's Foo Medical application that you can see here on screen, which is a demo application to show what the experience would be like for a patient accessing their medical records, specifically with MedPlum. And what we've done with it is that we integrated it with the Epic EMR sandbox, so we can see the patient records that come from MedPlum in line with the patient records that came from Epic, so a sort of one view of all of them together. So I'll show you what that process looks like and walk you through a little bit about how I did that, show you some of the code and the, and the calls that go on underneath, a little bit of the OAuth. Uh, in terms of questions while I'm demoing, please feel free to post in the chat or on the Discord. Alex and Rushmo will answer the questions that they can answer in, in time and anything more technical I can get to after the demo. So without further ado, I'll get started. So with the Foo Medical application open, I'm going to log into Foo Medical. I have an account at the ready, and what this will do is it will connect me to MedPlum sample data EMR. So you can see my name here, but it's gonna pull some patient data by default into the health records. I'll point out what this says here in a second. So we'll give this second for the, the results to load in, and then I'll show you a few of the results that came in. So here we got some vitals coming in, some lab results, there we go. Okay, so these are coming directly from the MedPlum EMR, this is some sample data that's being loaded for me as the patient. So you can see here we have one lab result, we have a couple of medications here, some blood pressure values that came from earlier this month, and various other results that all came in that are loaded in for the account for this. I can show you a little bit under the hood because I am going to connect to Epic in a second. But before that, I just want to show a little bit briefly what's going on under the hood here with the network calls to show you that these results are actually being pulled from Medplum and it isn't just me pasting them into the UI under the hood. So we can see some result values from for diagnostic report, medication requests, observation. These are resource types. These are fire resource types. And these endpoints are defined as a fire R4 over here. So an example of some of the responses that we got once they loaded in. Here we are. Here we go. So one of these medication requests that came in, let's find a good one to look at here. So we've got a, quite a few observations in here. We can see inside this observation, we see the code for blood pressure. So that's one of the blood pressure responses that we're getting in here that are loaded down here. So this is, I'm mainly just showing this to show you that these results came from requests that went to the MedPlum API that were authenticated when I logged in to the Foo Medical account. So now that I've shown you that, and remember we have one lab result here, what I'm going to do is integrate Epic into this. So this is some of the code that we injected in. And I'm going to explain a little bit about how this works and what we've done here as I'm doing it. So what this is going to do is it's connecting and uh, redirecting to my chart, which is Epic's patient login page. This would look different if it was for, say, a practitioner at a clinic. But in this case, we're doing it from the patient-facing perspective. I have at the ready um, Camilla's test patient account, we're going to load her patient information in. That this is a test patient that's coming from Epic's test data, their sandbox. So I'm going to sign in here to authenticate, as I would as a patient. I need to make sure that I am sure, yes, I am sure, that I want to share all this information with the Foo Medical app. I'll allow access, and once I've done that, um, it will redirect from Epic's auth back to Foo Medical. You can see here that the Epic integration is now checked off. To be clear, this, authentic this authentication flow is one of the flows that's available as part of Fire, and it is all using OAuth 2, and specifically Epic's the identity provider in this situation. So what I logged into that second time around, this login I just did, was to Epic Sandbox as a patient user. And of course, down the line, what we'd want to do is make it one login complete, but this is to show you how we can show the records all at the same time together. So now that we've integrated with Epic, I'll show you the health records. You can see we have some more results. What I've done is I've tagged the results that came from Epic in the lab results. So this is sort of to show that in line with the results that we got from MedPlum 
as part of their EMR, we see all the epic results here. So this is a lab result. We got a new medication. And we also have some new values for not body temperature, but we do have some for blood pressure. Here you go. So you can see some of these results are are scaled differently because they're coming from a different EMR, but we're still able to show them in line in the web UI here. And to prove to you that I'm not doing any kind of UI trickery and just clicking a button and then loading it from a file, I'll show you a few of the network calls that came from Epic. So you can see these are the Medplum ones that came through. If I keep scrolling down here, we can see a few that came from Epic. So this is one of the this is the authentication endpoint that was called when I clicked on integrate Epic. And here we can see alongside the diagnostic report for the Medplum endpoint, we're also getting the diagnostic report for fire, for Epic's fire endpoint here for the diagnostic report. This is Camilla's patient name here. And we can see that the results that came through in here are in fact what we wanted them to be. So this one's the hemoglobin A1C. That was the second one that we're seeing over here. And then we have all of the results that came from there as well. So this is kind of showcasing what it would look like or how it could look like and how easy it can be to, ep to integrate Epic's EMR with the Smarter Fire library. That's the name of our library I'm going to show you in a second to let you add this to web apps for integration. So having shown that, let me show you a little bit of the code that went underneath adding this in. It's all written in TypeScript, so similar to JavaScript here. I'm not going to go into too much nitty gritty, but I do want to show because I know some people will be interested in seeing that. So let me switch over to VS Code over here. This is I'm running this locally on, on my own machine. So the Foo Medical you were seeing was running. I'm not sure if you saw on my local host. So when I clicked that button, that epic integration button that was over here that said connect, actually, you can't see that anymore. So this button over here, what was happening was that this start standalone launch function was being called. And what this was doing was essentially running this, redirecting the page to this URL. This is Epic's auth endpoint. So that was when I was redirected to that, that path login page. And then upon successful login, a token is passed back to the browser. And then this little function here, which is always trying to see if the Epic integration is there, and that will only turn green once it's accepted. It reads from the browser the token information and then creates what we call an EMR client. This is part of our Smarter Fire library, which I will show you in a second. We have it on GitHub open sourced. Very quickly under the hood for this, this create EMR, where is it? Create EMR client does some checks for what kind of launch is being gone on. In this case, we did it what's called a standalone launch. And that means that the web app was running independently of being pre-connected to the EMR and sends the auth request through that redirect that I was showing you before. So this creates a fire client. And this fire client is a, li is a JavaScript library that uh, a lot of web apps are using. And we're using it under the hood of our library. And it does those uh, requests to the Epic auth endpoint to get back those, that code and that token to build it. And then this function here runs and creates what we call a fire client using the, the jot. And that fire client is essentially a, an object wrapper that lets you make requests to Epic's EMR. So requests like, I want to get a resource, or I want to post a new resource, like an observation or diagnostic report, like the things I was showing you before. So with that shown, I want to show you a bit of our documentation that walks you through how you would add this and implement this yourself. So let me switch over to, let me switch over to that really quickly. A little bit of promotion. This is our company webpage here, Topology Health. It's at topology.health, hopefully not too hard to remember. On our developers tab here, we explain what Smarter Fire is. So of course the original name is Smart On Fire. We call our library Smarter Fire because we believe it's smarter. And it lets you do these integrations that I was showing you on the web browser. So I sh showed you a little bit of the code underneath that allowed for that smart launch. So that was the button I was able to click to get it to launch. And you saw the network calls for the resources that were being got as well. I didn't show posting a resource. I don't have a prepared demo for that. But we do have pretty solid documentation here about what that could look like. And I know a lot of people have asked us and are interested in 
well, what does it look like if I want to post new data back to the EMR? Even for this sandbox use case, that's allowed and enabled. So using that Fire client that I had just described before, you can create a new resource. And in this case, the example is a document reference, which is one common example of a resource type that a clinician might want to post. It's information about document reference information about a patient. What this object would look like, I have an example of it down here below. This is all available online at topology.health. You can review this later as well. This uses the document reference type. It's one of Fire standard resource types. And this is all you would need to add into it. Generally, a document reference requires lots more information about the patient and about the encounter information and all that. What we've done with our library is we have a lot of that done automatically. Since the Smart Launch contains information about the encounter that the clinician or the patient is currently in, we have that loaded in directly when you make the request. So I'll scroll down here and I'll show you patient and encounter information are injected in at right. And this is the full result of what the document reference looks like. This is what gets written at the end. So I will not walk through all of it. The whole point at the beginning was to show you how small you need to make it to be able to, to send it off. And then all this information is pulled from the context that's loaded into the browser already. Finally, after you've written a document reference, this is all the code you would need to pull back that reference. You wanted to double check and make sure that what you're getting back from the EMR is in fact what you posted. So this is an example of what that would look like. You would make a request for that ID of the document reference that you got from the response. It would assign an ID for you to be able to reference it later. And then a binary attachment reference is given back to you. So the way that, EM, that Epic EMR stores document references is as binary files. So you would get that reference ID, pull the binary back, and then the example I have here is letting you log to the console what the attachment that came from that reference would look like. And this attachment would c contain a binary of exactly the document reference that we posted at the very beginning. It would contain the information contained in here, the coding and the text and the content as well. So this data here. I know I breezed through that a little bit quickly, but again, if you go to topology.health, we have this documentation for your reference. And as well, I can lead you to our GitHub page so Topology Health Smarter Fire, that's the name of our library. Um, we have this posted now. It's available. It's open source. You can use it today. Um, it's always in flux and in progress as we add new integrations into it. Um, we invite you. We welcome you to check it out, try using it. Uh, let us know if there's any issues with it, uh, any features that you don't see that you'd like to see, anything you'd like added to the readme to make it clearer. We've tried to make it as clear as possible how we've built our library to make it as easy as possible to do integrations with Epic. And also we've added Cerner recently. We think about adding more as Alex showed you on the slides before. How to install, what the smart launch looks like, the smart client, that's the client I talked to you about for making requests. And the standalone launch is in fact the type of launch that I demoed for you today here. And that's, that's our readme over there. And it's a really a, comprehensive readme, Josh. Love it. We did our best. I, I, as I'm sure many of you are developers as well, it always irritates me when I go to a page with lots of code in it and the readme has basically nothing in it. So I don't even know where to start. So I tried to think about what I would want to see if I was loading it. So I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. That's pretty much it for what I wanted to show you guys for the demo. So I'm happy to open the floor to questions here. I can go over in a little bit more detail if you want a little bit of the underpinning code, answer some more general questions about the OAuth process, or more questions about our library. I open the floor to, to everyone to ask questions if they're interested. So Alex, I think I think he had a little bit of material also on the provider side. We don't have a demo app for the provider experience, but I was wondering if you thought this would be a good time to kind of share that, Alex. 